We are back with another Dallas Cowboy film session. We have completed film sessions on our top six draft picks. You guys can go look through my catalog and um, see those film sessions if you want to. But uh, today we're going to start looking at undrafted free agents. I haven't done a film session on Ben DiNucci because James Madison coaching film is kind of like Bigfoot or like winning lottery tickets. Like, you know, apparently it exists, but, you know. You know, so uh, we're just going to jump directly into our undrafted free agents. Right. And I kind of want to make a series out of this because I feel really good about some of them and I feel really bad about others. Right. So we're just kind of going to look at these guys and we're going to watch film. And then at the end, we're going to have a discussion uh, from a perspective of was Vash Lombardi, by the way, from a perspective of do I feel like they can make the team and what their level of contribution will be. Just a handful of questions I got for them. And we kind of did that with the uh Isaac Aracon video our left tackle from um uh New Mexico not New Mexico from Mexican college football or whatever we kind of had to have a nuanced conversation about him I think that's interesting let's have a nuanced conversation about all these undrafted free agent guys and kind of see the answers that we can come up with all right so if you know Kendrick Rogers or if you've heard of Kendrick Rogers, uh, it, it was either via highlight tape or a tape with these highlights on it. His LSU game, which was stellar, um, which was full of goal line production. Now, I'm not going to show you very much of the LSU film because college football Illuminati be bugging. Um, so you guys can go watch it on your own. If I had coaches film version of it, I would show it, but I don't. So we're just kind of going to work with what we're going to work with. I do have some coach film y'all today but when i saw that game i kind of had some big expectations about kendrick rogers right I'm like man i can't wait till that dude come out in the draft it's going to be interesting to see how he stacks up um especially in this class filled with talented receivers right but we get to 2019 i just don't hear much of kendrick rogers so let me get into some of my research bags so i start to ask some you know some aggie fans and they was kind of uh, on kendrick rogers so i look up some game logs some game by game stats of him at you know, like he's touted as this uh, big super red zone threat. And I look at his touchdown production and it's just not there. So I was like, all right, cool. Let's go to his 2018 tape where I saw him at. Right. Because I saw him in 2018 versus LSU. Maybe that's where his good season is. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just uh, it kind of put me in a weird little spot here because I thought Kendrick Rogers was going to be tearing it up by now but of course film is going to answer all of your questions so uh without further ado man let's just kind of get into it running for the cardio and let's learn something new <clears throat> now kendrick rogers i think for the duration of this film he's going to be at the top of the screen but if not i will zoom in and indicate to you where he's lining up um we're going to talk about some things that i like about kendrick rogers at some point but boy we're going to talk about a bunch of problems i have with Kendrick Rogers. And if you just kind of run the film, he's at the top of the screen here. If you just kind of run the film on Kendrick Rogers, you got a lot of issues here. First of all, how he wins. He's not going to win by being a super athlete. He's not winning with nuanced route running. You know, he'll, you know, he liked to do this move where he just kind of come off the line of scrimmage and just lean. He'll just put his shoulder on somebody and just lean on somebody. And I don't know if that, I don't know if he was taught that, but, that's not what's going to get you open on the next level. And I normally don't like big receivers because of this, because I need you to have some type of nuance somewhere um, to get you wide open or, 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 or to get you somewhat open so that you can fight for the rest of the route. And he doesn't really have a move that does that for him. Take a look at him at the top of your screen here. He just kind of he does that lean. <laughs> Get off of you. Get off of me thing again, right? Now, we had a problem with Dez when 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 Dez was a Dallas Cowboy. We had a problem with him because he wasn't a nuanced route runner. He only ran like th four routes. Well, Kendrick Rogers is less of a nuanced route runner, and he only runs two routes. But we'll cross that road whenever we get there. Now, let's talk about this exchange that he's having right now with this corner that he's lined up against. Now, of course, we see Kendrick Rogers is working to get to the outside, right? And he just kind of ends up there and the ball goes that direction. But Kendrick, if you're trying to work to the outside, what we see from a lot of professional wide receivers, NFL wide receivers, even nuanced college guys, right? Give me a head fake to the inside of something. 
Give me some hands to the inside of some, a hard step inside of some to at least get this cornerback off track. If you Kendrick Rogers and you going to the outside, you just kind of going to run to the outside. And if I'm a cornerback that can identify that, we got him versus Auburn here. If, if I got a cornerback that can identify that, I know Kendrick Rogers ain't double moving me. I know Kendrick Rogers is not going to out athlete me. He may try to push me around and put that six, four frame on me, but that's not going to be enough um, to get me open. Right. Well, then somebody said, well, coach, how about this then, Vach? Well, he's not going to get open via route running or any kind of nuance or speed. Well, there's plenty of ways to get open in the National Football League, right? I totally agree. If you take a look at, at Kendrick Rogers here, this is what Texan and are trying to do with him, right? The best way to get somebody off of coverage if they can't get off of it on if they can't get off of it on their own is to put them in motion, put them in motion and take them off the line of scrimmage and just see if you can let them run free. And then I ran into an entirely different issue with Kendrick Rogers. He's your motion guy here. And my new issue with him is I just don't see a lot of effort here, right? Let alone not being explosive, but I just don't see a lot of effort. And I'm trying to give Kendrick a chance at this point. And I'm like, in my mind, and I'm like, well, man, maybe this is a play where it's only designed for the guy that's going to catch the football and everybody else on the field is just supposed to be jogging or something, I guess. I hate I hate plays like that, but those plays do exist. But I looked at the receiver at the bottom of the field, and he kind of trying to get his ass open. <laughs> he's fighting to get open. You look at the um, receiver up top right here, right? He's fighting to get open. Everybody's fighting to get open, but we just see this lumbered movement from Kendrick Rogers here. I know he's not going to be as fast as these other guys, but if you look at the other big guys in this draft, if you look at Gabriel Davis, you look at uh, Denzel Mims, T. Higgins, even if you look at Michael Pittman from USC, if you look at the other bigger receivers in this draft, they have some type of movement or smoothness to help them get open. They're not just getting open off the strength of being big guy. And that's kind of what Kendrick Rogers is doing. <laughs> And it made me sick. I just needed more effort from him, right? Take a look at Kendrick Rogers up top here. It just wasn't enough. I'm sorry, y'all. It just wasn't enough for me. It wasn't enough for me. It didn't explode or something. And, you know, I kind of see him dropping his hips a little bit. But explode and run through your route. When you run through your route, you better your chances of getting open, sir. Take a look at him up top again. Let's see what, what's happening on this play. That's not enough. If Okay, so look, if this was the first ever play that you saw Kendrick Rogers, he's up top here. If this was your first time ever seeing Kendrick Rogers and he ran this route, who, 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 who the hell are you trying to get off of you? Who are you trying to separate from? Let's see what he does off the rip. Does he try to fake outside to get back inside? No, he runs directly inside. He's not using his hands to get free. Use your hands to get free, Kendrick Rogers. You're a big six foot four fella. Use that radius, that catch radius, that arm length you got. Use that to keep guys off you. You're a bigger guy. Use that physicality to push guys off you. Leaning on people and starting in the starting in the direction that you're ending up ain't helping. It's not helping. And and then just kind of turning around at the end of the route. So if you listen to Texas A&M fans, they'll say, well, the problem with, with Kendrick Rogers is that he disappears and he just can't get open. He just can't separate from people. Well, I don't think he's not separated. He's not separated from people because he's not a nuanced route runner. I mean, that's part of it. I just don't think he has enough effort to get away from people. When you in between the 20s, I don't see Kendrick Rogers being very effective at all. It just comes down to him being red zone guy. It comes down to him being a red zone guy. Now, look, I included this play for a reason. Take a look at Kendrick Rogers to the outside right here, right? He's going to win this jump ball situation. It's not like he did a lot to get open right here, but we at least threw the 50-50 ball at him, and he was able to win in this exchange. So at least you can say, well, damn, Kendrick Rogers, if you got anything working for you, you got – 50 50 ball potential if 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 we're going to talk about him developing and his potential as a player then 50 50 ball jump ball goal line stuff that's going to be like where we're going to use you at and i want everybody to put that down in your notepad because it will be on the test because later on we will be talking about it okay put 50 50 jump ball guy in your notepad and we will come back to it take a look at kendrick rogers at the at the uh bottom of your screen here let's see what he does here to get open Nothing. <laughs> he does nothing here to get open. So I can imagine that when I'm looking at his game logs and he only got three catches, he only got four catches. I understand because he's only worth a target four times out of 60 something plays in a game. 
That ain't a lot. <laughs> that's that's not a lot at all. So how about this play, right? We get to the red zone, and I'm thinking, okay, cool. Well, well, Kendrick Rogers is supposed to excel down here. This is supposed to be his bread and butter. Even if you look at his red zone production, you know, just in your mind, if he can do anything, you would rather have him as a red zone receiver. Well, like, cool, Kendrick Rogers, but sometimes you 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 have to watch the film to get the answers that the stats aren't giving you you see what i mean so when i ask myself why hasn't kendrick rogers gotten any red zone productions my answer is because teams understand that teams understand that when you get into the red zone and kendrick rogers is going to be one of your weapons in the red zone then you need to take away kendrick rogers in the red zone and how do you take away a red zone guy your run zone Run zone coverage. Like if, if, you know, you only throw back shoulder fades, you throw jump balls, you throw 50-50 balls, you throw those in one-on-one situations, right? And most of those one-on-one situations come from man coverage, you know, just kind of uh, your wide receiver versus a cornerback on some island. Well, you defeat that by, you know, dropping guys in zone. And you can kind of mix it up a little bit. You can put some guys in man. You can drop other guys in zone. But for the most part, if guys are in zone, it's going to be harder for Kendrick to win a lot of jump ball matchups. And since Kendrick just kind of floating in the back of the end zone here, if I'm playing zone defense and I'm reading the eyes of the quarterback and I know that Kendrick Rogers is one of your red zone guys or that this big dude is one of your red zone guys, I'm going to drop some guys in a general area to kind of make it uncomfortable for Kendrick Rogers. And it happens a lot. It happens a lot in this film, man. It happened a bunch in uh, in his game versus Alabama. It happened a lot in the, um, the uh, Mississippi State game. Just a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, man. Um, and I added this one play of Kendrick Rogers just so y'all wouldn't, you know, wasn't thinking I was hating on him. First of all, I gave him a big highlight at the at the front end of the video. And hey, if you let Kendrick Rogers run free, he's at the bottom here. <laughs> if you let him run free, then he gets open. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Kendrick Rogers does does get open, in fact, if you allow him to run free. There you go. So when he gets to the league and plays in preseason, he's going to need some people to run free for him to get wide open releases. Now, let's have a conversation about Brother Kendrick Rogers. Let me take a sip of water here. Um, if y'all just came for the film, man, shouts out to y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Like the video, sub, and all that. Follow me on Twitter. But for the rest of you that are here for the discussion, that are willing to hang around for the discussion, let me take a sip of water, and we're going to have a conversation about Kendrick Rogers. Mm-hmm. All right, so, Pete, I got some questions written down about Kendrick Rogers. I got four of them, actually. My first question about Kendrick Rogers <clears throat> is can he make the team with just one job? Can he make the team with one job? And I think with Kendrick Rodgers, you 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 have to go into it um, thinking about his role, thinking about his role and what he's going to do for your team. And in real life, I do not consider Kendrick Rodgers to be a player that's in consideration to make the team. Um, and when we talk about him as a practice squad player, I'm not talking about him from a perspective of, hey, can he come in, develop, and possibly be a starting receiver for me in three years? And I don't think that's the case because you're not going to pay him to be here. So that's that's a that's a problem, first of all. But when I say him as a practice squad guy, I say, man, look, we're going we're gonna to play a team this year. We're going to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we know Mike Evans is a big-ass 6'5 receiver that's going to jump over people. Hey, we got Kendrick Rogers on our practice squad. Let's get some practice putting our DBs against – taller receivers i think that's what kendrick rogers job is going to be because let me tell you what's what's the the first few issues about him making the team first of all you only make the team when you have multiple jobs that you can do on the team example can he play special teams that's going to be a big deal amongst all these all these young guys here kendrick is not going to be a gunner he's not going to be a returner he's not going to block any any punts or field goals or anything like that so he's only really playing wide receiver. That's your first problem. Um, and okay, cool. That was, that was my second question. Can he can he play special teams? I don't think he can. I think his only job is going to be playing receiver somewhere. And I know there's going to be some comments in the comment sections, comments in the chat box um, that are going to say, "Well, Vach, wouldn't you have him on the team just to kind of be your be your jump ball guy, your red zone threat?" Well, here's my caveat to that. And it, this goes this this goes to my next question, not not my caveat, but my response to that, and it goes into my next question: Is his role elite enough for his skills to translate? And is that his only job? I keep going back to his only job. Now, if you are an automatic fifty fifty ball guy, and you got 
red zone production, you got touchdown production, and you can promise me 15 touchdowns a year, then fine. That'll be your job. That's all you do. Come on in and be that guy. But I don't think Kendrick Rogers is that guy. First of all, he wasn't even that guy in college. He was that guy for a couple games, right, of like, what, 16 games? He was that guy for three of them. Or something like that. The Clemson game, Mississippi State one time, and um, last year versus LSU. He was only that guy three times in in 16 games. I don't think that's good enough to translate into um, to translate into a full time position. Right. So we know you're not going to use him 20 to 20 from the 20 yard line to the 20 yard line. So now we get to the red zone. All right, y'all. It's time for Kendrick Rogers to come out on the field. First of all, Cowboy fans hate when you are predictable as a scheme and, and play caller. So that goes against the grain. Um, if Kendrick Rogers is out there, we know he's only good at one thing. And if that defense can adjust to that one thing, you basically wasted a spot on Kendrick Rogers being out there. And then for three, who the hell you taking off the field to put Kendrick Rogers on the field when you pass the 20? You taking – Zeke off the field to go empty. You take a CD Lamb off the field, Gallup or Cooper. I'm not taking Blake Jarrell. Yo, Vach, can he um can he play tight end or something? No, because you're going back to making yourself one dimensional. What if we want to run the ball with Zeke? He's not blocking enough to be to be a to be a tight end guy. I mean Blake ain't I mean uh Blake Jarrell ain't that guy neither, but Blake Bell would be that guy. And I'm not taking Blake Bell off the field to be more predictable for Kendrick Rogers. See what I'm saying? Um it's just a weird, a weird spot for Kendrick right now. And I just don't think he has enough skills right now. And my last question is, and uh, there are plenty of people that's going to ask me this, is can he develop? Can he work on route running? Can he work on his speed? And can he work on this and work on that and work on that uh, in order to develop into a better player? My answer is I don't think so. I don't think so because this is the National Football League. And I know sometimes we have favorite players. And I know sometimes we look at some of these players like, oh, man, if we work on this thing, this thing, and this thing, they'll be all right. Well, to be fair, if Lance Lenore was a little faster and if Lance Lenore route running was a little better and if Lance Lenore would, like, catch the ball every time and he showed up on, like, big game days, oh, Lance Lenore would be straight. You see what I'm saying? Oh, if Dez Bryant ran routes a little better and if Dez Bryant was a little faster and if Dez Bryant was two years younger, boy, it would be straight. You see what I'm saying? Everybody has a conversation like that. So Kendrick Rogers got to beat Noah Brown. Kendrick Rogers got to beat Cedric Wilson. Kendrick Rogers got to beat John V. Johnson. These are guys that have defined roles on this team already. Kendrick doesn't have one. You see what I mean? So you ain't got to worry about um, you ain't got to worry about Cedric Wilson and what he's doing. We know Cedric can go out there and run routes, catch and pass and run around a little bit. We just got to work on where would you put Cedric on the field or where would you put Noah on the field or where would you put John Vey on the field? We got to worry about Kendrick making the team first. And I think that's the problem. I think that's the biggest problem. And what it's going to come down to is we're going to get back to practice squad conversation. You can only keep so many guys, and you may only have one spot for a receiver. You're going to ask yourself, who do I want on my practice squad as a wide receiver? Do, uh, do I want it to be um, um, Do I want it to be John V. Johnson, a guy like Ventrell Bryant, or Kendrick Rogers? I think Ventrell and John V. are going to have that uh, have that nod because – they have design roles on his team already, and Kendrick does not. This ain't me hating. This is just me being realistic. Kendrick got a long road to climb, but if he go to training camp and just jump over everybody, we'll see. But anyway, man, that's my long conversation about Kendrick Rogers. Um, we're going to be doing some more uh, – some more undrafted free agent film. I don't ask for recommendations too much, but if y'all suggest somebody, one of our undrafted free agents, if y'all suggest that we watch film on on um one of those guys next, then I'll f- I'll look at your recommendation and we'll consider going that route. I just kind of want to know who y'all have a feel for because there are some undrafted free agents that I think are better than than Kendrick Rogers. I just think it was a lot of questions being asked about him in the you know community and all. I just think people really had questions about him, so therefore, you know, I thought it was appropriate to kind of put him out there first to kind of see what y'all had to say. See, so y'all can see what I had to say about him. 
All right. That'll be all for me today, man. This uh this ending part was long winded, but I think that's what it was for. I think it was for a discussion and the film was early. So y'all can kind of cut that thing off, you know, you know, whenever y'all was ready for it. But y'all hold it down for the Doski Walski and Peaceky Whiskey, man. Till next time. Salute. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that's subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.